Let's look at using the C210M2 rack mount server to get the benefits we discussed in our whiteboard drawing, UC on UCS, Benefits and Technologies. Cisco has provided three tested reference configurations for these servers. The simplest option is the C210M2 tested reference configuration number one. With this configuration, the server has three NICs on the motherboard, one of them for out-of-band management. It has an extra four NICs on a quad gig card. The server is deployed with two CPUs, each with four cores for a total of eight and with 48 gig of RAM. 10 146 serial attached SCSI hard drives are used. Two of them are configured with RAID 1 and used for the ESXi install, and the other eight are configured for RAID 5 and used as a data store for our UC Apps virtual machines. Let's talk about C210M2 vSwitch configuration. All three tested reference configurations have the same network connectivity, so we can use the same vSwitch configuration for all three. We have three Ethernet ports on the motherboard, one of which is used for out-of-band management of the chassis, and we have a Broadcom Quad Gig eCard with four ports. Let's use two vSwitches. We'll connect the first VM NIC to a network port on the motherboard and the other VM NIC to a port on the Broadcom card. vSwitch 0 will be for our VM kernel traffic, VMware management, vMotion, and IP storage, if we used it. We'll use vSwitch 1 for our UC application traffic. We'll connect one vNIC to the other network port on the motherboard and the other three vNICs to the last three ports on the Broadcom card. Our UC apps can be attached to the vSwitch using a single port group so all the apps are in the same VLAN. Or, if you prefer, you could use separate port groups each with their own VLAN and trunks to the upstream switches. For NIC teaming, we can use IP hash. This means that our upstream switches should be configured for port channeling or VPC if appropriate. All the C210M2 tested reference configurations have dual E5640 4-core processors, so we have 8 cores. How many UC apps can we support on these 8 cores? Well, that depends. Let's look at an example. Let's assume that we have a customer with 4,000 users and the customer wants telephony and voicemail with full redundancy. First, we need to understand the UC on UCS OVA templates. Here are some 8.5 OVAs. This table indicates the numbers of users supported for a VM using each template. If we distribute our 4,000 CUCM users across two redundancy groups, then we need to use the 2,500 user template. That's because each VM in each redundancy group needs to be able to support 2,000 users. Our cluster will look like this. We have one publisher and we need redundant TFTP servers for a cluster of this size. Our first redundancy group has CUCM1A and CUCM1B. Our second has CUCM2A and CUCM2B. We'll load balance 2,000 users across the call manager in each redundancy group. All of the VMs in the cluster must use the same OVA. That means each VM will be allocated one vCPU, four gig of VRAM, and one 80 gig vDisk. Our total requirements are seven vCPUs, 28 gig of VRAM, and seven 80 gig vDisks, meaning 560 gig of storage. For Unity Connection, we'll deploy a single high availability cluster using the 5000 user template. For Unity Connection, we also need to consider how many voicemail ports are required. This table shows the relationship between the Unity Connection OVAs and ports. Let's assume 100 G711 ports are sufficient. We'll add our Unity Connection High Availability Cluster, which has two VMs, each requiring two vCPUs, four gig of RAM, and one 200 gig vDisk. 
We now need a total of 11 vCPUs, 36 gig of VRAM, and 780 gig plus two 200 gig VDisks, needing 960 gig of storage. We'll need two C210 M2 servers to support this. Let's map our UC apps onto the servers. Here are some things to consider. First, don't oversubscribe the cores. Each server needs to have at least as many cores as the VMs it supports have vCPUs. If Unity Connection is running on the server, we need to reserve a core for ESXi scheduling. There's no configuration required for this, we just subtract one from the number of vCPUs we can support. Second, we can't break our UC redundancy strategy. Putting CUCM1A and CUCM1B on the same server would be a bad idea. Thirdly, don't put all the publishers on the same server. Mix publishers and subscribers. If we follow these rules, we can distribute our apps like this. We'll put the CUCM publisher on the first server. We'll put the Unity Connection publisher, CUC1, on the second server to distribute our publishers. We'll put CUC2 on the first server, so if one server fails, we will still have a running Unity Connection VM. We'll put TFTP1 on one server and TFTP2 on the other. We'll put CUCM1A on one server and CUCM1B on the other. And finally, we'll put CUCM2A on one server and CUCM2B on the other. Each server has a Unity Connection VM, so we need to reserve a core on each server for ESXi scheduling. We have six vCPUs on one server and five on the other. Each server has a core reserved for ESXi scheduling. This works out great. If we use spec-based configurations, we could swap out the E5640 processors with supported processors with more cores. That gives us the ability to support more VMs. Let's look at VRAM now. VRAM is easy because we are unlikely to need more than the 48 gig specified. Going back to our diagram illustrating the mapping for vCPUs to cores, let's add VRAM. The CUCM VMs all need 4 gig of VRAM. The Unity Connection VMs need 4 as well. We also need to allocate 2 gig of RAM just for the ESXi server. So, that means our first server needs 22 gig of RAM and the second 18 gig. That's much less than the 48 gig specified. Finally, let's look at storage. This is also easy. We're unlikely to need more than the storage specified for the reference configuration. Going back to our diagram, let's add vDisks. The CUCM VMs all need 80 gig vDisks. The Unity Connection VMs need 200 gig vDisks. So that means our first server needs 520 gig of storage and the second 440 gig. How much storage do we have? Our eight 146 gig drives configured in RAID 5 gives us about 950 gig. Our rules for LUNs are simple. First, LUN should be between 500 gig and 1.5 terabytes. Our storage is right in the middle. Second, the lens should be sized for 4 to 8 apps. And third, our UC app vDisks plus room for RAM cache cannot consume more than 90% of the total storage. So, we are in great shape. Here is the big picture. We've taken a UC deployment with telephony and voicemail for 4,000 users and deployed the VMs on two different C210 M2 servers. With these two servers and VMware Standard Edition, we get the following benefits described in UC on UCS, Benefits and Technologies. We need less stuff and we get application mobility. C210 M2 Tested Reference Configuration number 2 is the same as Tested Reference Configuration number 1, except the UC apps live in the SAN. 
We'll access the apps via an HBA with two 4 gig fiber channel ports. Each of our server's fiber channel ports will be connected to separate SANs having access to the same storage. Remember our rules for LUNs. First, LUN should be between 500 gig and 1.5 terabytes. Second, the LUN should be sized for 4 to 8 apps. And third, our UC app VDISCs plus room for RAM cache cannot consume more than 90% of the total storage. If we allocate LUNs for UC Data Store 1 and UC Data Store 2 with 600 gig and 500 gig respectively, we should have enough space. If we want capabilities like vMotion and HA, then we need to make both data stores available to both ESXi servers. The LUNs presented to the ESXi servers should be zoned for both fiber channel ports. And here is our drawing for mapping our UC apps onto tested reference configuration number two. With these two servers, VMware Standard Edition and a SAN solution for our UC apps, we get the following benefits described in UC on UCS Benefits and Technologies. We need less stuff and get application mobility, and with the SAN, we get both vMotion and HA. C210M2 tested reference configuration number 3 is the same as tested reference configuration number 2, except the ESXi installs also live in the SAN. We have no direct attached storage and will boot from SAN. We'll access the same HBA with two 4 gig fiber channel ports. All we need for this is to provide a small LUN for each of our server's ESXi installs. These LUNs should only be visible to the servers that boot from them. And here is our drawing for mapping our UC apps onto tested reference configuration number three. The benefits of this reference configuration are similar to those of tested reference configuration number two. Thanks for watching.